Coming up on today's episode of Airborne, United Airlines' Jeffrey Smysek to chair A4A Board of Directors. D-Motor introduces a new ASTM-compliant engine. And the Berlin Candy Bomber receives the Congressional Gold Medal. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. As we are wrapping up today's episode of Airborne, our newsroom got a late-breaking story. Jim Campbell is here to report. Thanks, Ashley, and hi, folks. Well, let's lead off with some good news. It's so nice to have breaking news that isn't a tragedy or isn't a problem. It's nice to be able to say, guess what? Something great just happened, and something indeed did happen of a very great nature. After delays yesterday with the launch of EFT-1 and the test of the Orion space vehicle, but they had all kinds of problems going on. They had boats in the restricted area. They had wind violations, a number of them, throughout the launch cycle and an almost three-hour launch window. And then finally, sticky valves as a result of a lot of cold soaking that occurred through uh, the various power-ups and power-downs of the vehicle as they prepared multiple times for launch. But come Friday morning, 07.05 Eastern Time, Orion was ready to go, and without a glitch, it lifted off in a very bright, very exciting fashion, and to make a long story short, went on to proceed to conduct 17 critical steps in the mission flawlessly. I repeat, flawlessly from everything we've heard so far. The vehicle splashed down just a few moments ago, about 630 miles from San Diego. It's being picked up by the Navy, and it will be on its way to NASA before you know it. This particular launch was boosted by a Delta IV heavy rocket. There were two elliptical orbits in the four and a half hour mission profile, uh, one minor elliptical that only went out a couple hundred miles, I believe 504, but the second elliptical orbit went all the way out to 3,604 statute miles and then came screaming back at 20,000 miles an hour to provide quite a test of a reentry system for a vehicle returning from far outside normal Earth orbital interfaces. The $375 million test flight was designed to test a number of new technologies and new vehicles, and while it's been boosted by NASA as the first step to Mars, that's a little bit more hype and fairly unrealistic because a tremendous amount of additional technologies and vehicles and boosters will need to be developed. NASA has a chance of putting together not only a dynamic space program, but a dynamic manned space program sometime in the future. However, I gotta warn you, the first manned mission using any of the Orion equipment is not scheduled for 2021. So while it's an exciting process, it's going to be a slow one. We'll keep you up to date. For the Aero News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell. We'll see you at the next launch. United Airlines Chairman, President and CEO Jeffrey Smysek has been elected to a two-year term as Chairman of the Airlines for America, known as a for a Board of Directors, American Airlines Chairman and CEO Doug Parker was elected to serve as Vice Chairman. Nicholas E. Calillo, A4A President and CEO, said in part, quote, Jeff Smysek is a strong advocate for this industry, taking a lead in pushing for airlines to be run and treated as global businesses so that they can contribute at an even greater level to the economy and jobs, end quote. Smysek said, quote, I look forward to working with A4A and my industry peers to advocate for the U.S. commercial aviation industry and for the customers, employees, communities, and investors that rely on it to be financially and operationally strong. This industry can drive even more economic activity and job growth than it does today, and it is in all of our stakeholders' collective interest to make that happen, end quote. A new engine by D-Motor USA now qualifies for special light sport aircraft as well as home-built experimental aircraft. D-Motor USA has announced the successful completion of the D-Motor LF26 ASTM engine certification process. The LF26 is a four-cylinder horizontally opposed four-stroke engine that has met or exceeded the ASTM International Consensus Standard requirements for engine certification. The D-Motor company began production of the engine in 2010. The D-Motor is a four-stroke side valve flathead boxer engine. It features multi-point fuel injection, electronic ignition, and liquid cooling. It provides a maximum continuous power of 89 horsepower. The ASTM compliant engine is equipped with dual ECU electronic ignition systems, direct point fuel injection, 
direct drive propeller, and water-cooled cylinders and heads. It's certified with a 3,000 RPM redline limitation and has a manufacturer-recommended TBO of 2,000 hours. After the break, the Berlin Candy Bomber receives the Congressional Gold Medal. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, send an email to news-spy at aero-news.net. The Berlin Candy Barmer, Colonel Gail Halverson, will be among members of the Civil Air Patrol receiving a Congressional Gold Medal for their service during World War II. The Congressional Gold Medal is the highest award Congress can give to a civilian. In June 1948, Russia laid siege to Berlin, cutting off the flow of food and supplies over highways to the city. Gail Halverson was one of hundreds of U.S. pilots involved in the airlift. Upon seeing the children in such distress, he decided to do what he could, and the Berlin Candy Bomber was born. As he flew in the next day, he wiggled the wings of his plane to identify himself and then dropped several small bundles of candy using parachutes crafted from handkerchiefs to slow their fall. Local newspapers picked up on the story and other transport crews joined Halverson and military officials sanctioned the candy drop. Enthusiasm spread to America and candy contributions came from all across the country. Within weeks, candy manufacturers began donating candy by the boxcar. Halverson's actions showed Americans at their best. It's Friday at last and time for our weekly barnstorming commentary. Today, Jim takes a look into the Aero News Airborne Crystal Ball and shares a glimpse into the future with our viewers. Here's this week's barnstorming. Thanks, Ashley, and hi, folks. Well, it's time to start letting the cat out of the bag. Need to check around here, make sure the cat hasn't taken that personally. But to make an extremely long story short, we've been working on something for the better part of two years. Uh, both from our own business standpoints as well as the industry around us, we just can't keep doing the same thing over and over again and expect to get a different result. Einstein thought that was insanity and we quite agree. I think to a certain extent, ANN has led in so many areas, it was expected that we would have to do something dramatic, uh, even radical, to really make a dent in where we're at. And guess what? We agree with that as well. So let me explain a little bit of what's going on, and over the next couple of weeks, we'll let more and more of the cat out of the bag. Yep, cat's still okay. And we'll see what happens. Uh, more than anything else, we tell you in no uncertain terms that we think we have something extraordinary to offer to the aviation community, not just in what it is, but what it can do, and because of the people we're working with as a result. Broadly put, we are going to introduce on January 5th, Airborne Unlimited. Airborne Unlimited is more than just the program. It is the pointy end of the spear for a massive assault on what has been wrong with this industry, the attitude of, well, that's the way they've always done it, and the really poor results that have accrued because of that attitude. We'll be introducing Airborne Unlimited five days a week, Monday through Friday, plus bulletins for breaking news as they occur. And a little bit later on in the month, somewhere in the late January, early February time frame, a weekly wrap up of the week that was with commentary and input from some of the experts in the industry. More than that though, what's really exciting about Airborne Unlimited is the fact that we've got lots of reasons to believe that this is gonna be something different. We've built a consortium. We've built an organization. We've built an extension of ourselves through a number of entities in this industry in a way that hasn't happened before. Three things are going to occur. One, 
we're going to widen the choir. Everybody preaches to their own little choir. What we're going to be doing over a period of time is showing them a way to preach to everybody else's choir. Two, we're going to provide a united front for the leading stories and the most important topics in aviation. So when something really important comes along, something powerful can get behind it, i.e. what we're building, and make sure that one and all understand what it is and why it's important. And third, we're going to build a programming initiative that, for the first time, will not only serve the needs of aviation at L, but outside of aviation. One of the things that's been particularly difficult about aviation news and information is that, well, only people who get it are the folks within aviation. We need to be able to take solid information, expert information, from folks who know how to spell aileron, and get it outside of the normal confines of the industry into the rest of the real world to prove that aviation is exciting, valuable, versatile, and something that they need to pay attention to in no uncertain terms. How do we do that? Well, I'll tell you in the coming days, but so far we've got 109 reasons why we think this is going to be something extraordinary. And those 109 reasons are some of the most powerful organizations and entities in aviation. More to follow. For the Aero News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell, and I promise you, you've only heard 1% of what's coming. After these messages, lease a classic biplane and make money with it. We'll tell you how. ADS-V will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADS-V today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-V out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Finally, the extraordinary story of the world-changing XPRIZE space competition is being told and illustrated with hundreds of insider photos in Jim Campbell's colorful new book, Beyond the Blue. Journey with Jim as he flies formation with spaceships, plays in zero gravity, prepares rocket racers, and documents the amazing first decade of the personal space race. Available this summer. Get your advance order in now by checking out www.kindredspirit.com. Welcome back. The Waco Aircraft Corporation has rolled out a new factory direct leasing program for the Great Lakes 2T1A2. The company says the program is designed to support the upset prevention and recovery training needs for flight schools and help them comply with FAA AC 120 UPRT, FAA AC 120 109, and upcoming ICAO Airplane Upset Prevention and Recovery Training Manual Guidelines. The lease plan is comprised of a monthly base lease rate that includes flight hours, then an hourly rate for time over the included base. The program includes all scheduled maintenance. The program can be custom tailored for the unique needs of each school. The Great Lakes by Waco is a fully aerobatic 180 horsepower aircraft featuring docile ground handling, yet excellent aerobatic capability. The company says those characteristics make it the perfect trainer for loss of control in flight programs. EAA Warbirds of America member number one, Walter Ulrich, passed away last month just six days shy of his 86th birthday. He was instrumental in bringing together people who wanted to keep old warplanes flying. Walt joined the Navy's Aviation Midshipman Program in 1946. In his long career, which included a tour in Vietnam, flying A-4 Skyhawks from the USS Intrepid, Walt flew virtually all the Navy's early jet aircraft. He also flew in the first Reno Air Races in 1964, which was the first year the organization that became the Warbirds of America was first discussed. Warbirds of America was officially up and running in the spring of 1965, with Walt serving as its first president in 1966. In 1967, Warbirds of America became a division of the EAA. Well, that's our program. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. Join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new edition. And remember, the next generation of Airborne will be unveiled in just a few weeks.
I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.